Hello viewers and learners of the Postgraduate Diploma in Environmental and Occupational Health. Welcome to this course on Environmental Toxicology. I introduce myself as Dr. Sushmita Vaskar from the School of Interdisciplinary and Transdisciplinary Studies, Indira Gandhi National Open University. This uh, uh, title which we will be dealing with today is Environmental Neurotoxicology. So we have learnt about the concepts uh, in the toxicology, certain definitions which are related to this and also certain systemic and organ toxins and now we will see how the uh, toxicants can have a specific effect on specific organs. So neurotoxicology refers to those effects of the toxins on the brain and the central nervous system. So the learning objectives of this module will include certain concepts and definitions related to neurotoxicology, the action and behavior of certain neurotoxic substances. We will see the environmental factors which are responsible for bringing about neurotoxicity and finally we will also understand and uh, discuss uh, certain disorders for example Parkinson's disease or Alzheimer's disease which may also be related to environmental factors and toxicants and the high prevalence of these diseases presently. Now let us first understand about the human nervous system. So the human nervous system this coordinates behavior, it perceives and responds to the external stimuli, it mediates with the external environment, coordinates activities of all the organs and it maintains the metabolic balance. The nervous system, now this is a highly complex part of the human body and it coordinates its actions and sensory information by transmitting signals to and from different parts of its body. So in this diagram you can see there is a flow chart and uh, we have explained that this nervous system it could be classified into the peripheral nervous system and the central nervous system. Again the central nervous system can be further classified into the brain and the spinal cord. The peripheral nervous system this could be classified into the autonomic and the somatic systems. The autonomic can be further classified into the parasympathetic and sympathetic and the somatic can further be classified into the sensory and the motor. The peripheral nervous system, this consists of nerves, they are enclosed in bundles of long fibers or axons and they connect the central nervous system to other parts of the body. So here you can see the diagram of the uh, dendrite, the nucleus, you can see the cell body, you can see the axon, okay, the, how the myelin sheath is covering the um, axon. Then you can see the node of Ranvier where there are certain junctions. You can also see the synaptic junctions and the direction of the nerve impulse, how this is going. Now there are these motor and efferent nerves which are transmitting signals from the brain and the sensory and the afferent this will transmit the information from the body to the central nervous system. There are also mixed nerves for example the spinal nerves they will serve both these functions which have been described above. We have the enteric nervous system and this functions to control the gastrointestinal system. Both the autonomic and the enteric nervous system they function involuntarily. The human brain. Now this is the central organ of the human nervous system and with the spinal cord they make up the central nervous system. Now the brain, this consists of the cerebrum, the brain stem and the cerebellum. So these are all involved in like your learning activities, your uh, creative skills, you know that all and, and also your speaking, uh, the, the intellect and all this is contained in the uh, cerebrum. Now the cerebellum is controlling you know your uh, involuntary activities and so on. All this is contained, this the uh, entire uh, the brain systems, they are contained in and they are protected by the skull bones. Neuroanatomy is a term which is referred to the study of the anatomy of the brain. Neuroscience is the study of its function. Now this is the structure of the human brain. Here you can actually see the, uh, the systems clearly. So we have the frontal lobe and this is involved in the decision making, problem solving, consciousness and also emotional behavior. 
Then we have the basal ganglia which is important in movement. We have the temporal lobe which is important in learning, in memory, in hearing and also in interpreting language. The hypothalamus, this is very much important in controlling thirst, in uh, telling us uh, the hunger, in sleep, the mood and also whenever we have the uh, fever and so on. It is a hypothalamus regulation which is very important which is balance, bringing about the balance in the human body. Then there is the parietal lobe. This is involved in sensation, in perception, in spatial reasoning. Then we have the occipital lobe that is very important in vision and in, in seeing things. We have the thalamus. This is important in sensory relay and in, in so other functions. Cerebellum. This is important in coordination, in your movement, when you walk, the posture, the balance. All this is supported by the cerebellum and its activities. Brain stem, you know, or the pons cerebelli. This is important in breathing, in uh, swallowing, the important in regulating your heart uh, beat, your heart rate, your blood pressure and so on. So you have seen each and every aspect of that small human brain which is as uh, uh, big as compared to your fist, you know everybody's uh, uh, size would be different and that is controlling the entire body and the different uh, functions which is important. So that is why uh, brain death and heart death, these are two concepts which the medical doctors always believe and which is to be uh, taken. In some countries brain death is also considered as uh, the death of a person whereas in some countries we often take the heart has to stop, the death of the heart is declared when the uh, patient can be declared uh, dead and no more living. So the brain. This is protected by the skull and it is suspended in the cerebrospinal fluid and it is isolated from the blood stream by the blood brain barrier. This blood brain barrier, it is protecting us against the circulating toxins or pathogens and that can cause several brain infections. At the same time, it will also allow the vital nutrients which can reach the brain. However, this is still susceptible to disease, infection, stroke and trauma degenerative disorders which I explained in the first part of my lecture. We have the Parkinson's disease, Alzheimer's disease and multiple sclerosis. Let us take a look at these disorders. The Parkinson's disease. Here you see he is an old man maybe in his uh, 60s or 70s and you can see he has a stooping um, posture and uh, you will see that the trunk is actually uh, tilted uh, forward and uh, th there is uh, the facial expression also there is a different kind of a facial expression then uh, the postural balance is also not very normal rigidity occurs in the bones then there is also uh, rigidity in you know the hips or on the knees and there is trembling of the extremities this is very important in the parkinson's disease you will see that their hands tremble or even their extremities their leg and the feet also tremble then there is also the, uh, the way they walk that can also be uh, uh, certainly different from the very normal um, person. So this is very common in the elderly people and it can result in bradykinesia, resting uh, tremor and also rigidity. But this is also being observed in the younger generation, younger when I mean, I mean to say even after 45 and 50s people are developing this disease. So this is characterized histopathologically by the degeneration of the dope aminogenergic neurons in the substantia nigra pars compacta leading to the progressive loss of the neurotransmitter dopamine and cardinal motor deficits. So this is associated with the abnormal accumulation of misfolded proteins primarily alpha synuclein in the cytoplasmic inclusions called the Lewy bodies and neurites the pathogenesis is still not well understood. So now here in this uh, figure you can see a non-Parkinson's and a Parkinson's brain. So here you can uh, see the substantia nigra okay that difference you can see in both parts and you can, you can uh, uh, actually see it even in the uh, bigger part of the uh, brain and also there are certain cytoplasmic inclusions called as the Lewy, Lewy bodies and the neurites and still research is being conducted to understand the neuropathological lesions uh, which are involving this disease. 
So, similar neuropathological lesions which are involving the deposition of these abnormal proteins characterize other neurological disorders such as in the Alzheimer's, the Lewy body dementia, Huntington's disease, the multiple system atrophy and also some prion diseases. Now coming on to the term neurotoxicity. This is the capacity of any chemical, biological or physical agent to cause adverse functional and structural change in the nervous system. Environmental neurotoxicity refers to the adverse neural responses to exposures to all the external extra genetic factors for example occupational exposures, lifestyles in the pharmaceuticals, food and also even radiation. Neurotoxins. So these toxins can alter the activity of the nervous system in ways that can disrupt or kill the nerves. Due to their high metabolic rate, neurons are at the greatest risk of damage that are caused by the neurotoxins. Depending on a neurotoxin's chemical profile, it will cause damage to certain parts or particular cellular elements of the nervous system. Non-polar substances, now these are more soluble in lipids and therefore they can enter the uh, nervous tissue more easily than the polar compounds which are less soluble in the lipids. So this can cause the nigros triacial cell death by interfering with the mitochondrial function, inducing the oxidative stress, protein aggregation and it can also modify the proteasomal function. For example, exposure to the heavy metals like lead, mercury, cadmium, arsenic and manganese all this can increase the risk of degenerative diseases through the neurotoxic accumulation of metals in the substantia nigra pars compacta and by increasing the oxidative stress induced apoptosis. Alzheimer's disease. This is also referred to as an old man's disease and it is a type of dementia and it is also a cause of dementia. So in dementia, this is basically a general term which is given to a decline in memory, in reasoning or in other thinking skills. And Alzheimer's disease, this is responsible for 60 to 80 percent of the dementia cases. So you have seen in the elderly people, you know, they forget where they have kept their glasses or where they have kept their, you know, their medicines and um, sometimes we feel that they are doing it purposefully. But it is due to the onset of certain uh, dementia, these diseases, neurodegenerative diseases and uh, in the long term they can also forget you know your names or even the names or even their closed ones. They forget to uh, recognize the very close ones but sometimes some people they will easily recognize. For example, their grandchildren or their own sisters or their uh, very own blood relations, them they may recognize. So all this is uh, you know the understanding the brain system and these uh, neurological effect uh, researchers are continuously researching on this and it is a very interesting topic of our research. And uh, continuously people are experimenting on various substances which are causing such diseases. But still generally Alzheimer's disease sets in at an age older than 65 where people have had a family history of this disease, inheriting genes from our parents, existing mild cognitive impairment, Down syndrome which is a chromosomal aberration that can also cause the disease previous head trauma or any uh, injury to the head that can also cause the disease and also when people are shut off from a community sometimes you know people are uh, uh, due to their peer pressure even the um, these are some hazards of working in an office uh, when uh, the, uh, there is multitasking and when you are not able to cope up uh, with the pressure and with your colleagues then you go in isolation for extended periods of time and that way you get more and more reclusive, not connected with people and then you can also develop such kind of mental diseases. Now there can also be other psychiatric conditions for example schizophrenia. So schizophrenia is also a type of a mental disorder. Here again people could be elated, uh, they could have certain clinical depression syndromes. They are thought to be associated with certain brain dysfunctions. This figure you can see the symptoms of schizophrenia where in the positive they could have delusions, they could also have hallucinations, they can also have certain kind of psychological and suicidal uh, effects, they can also have the speech uh, defects 
and here again they can also have suicidal tendencies for themselves and also for others they can even harm and injure other people in their locality or in their own family so this is a serious mental disorder in which people interpret reality abnormality so for them they will consider that you know some person is standing in front of them or even behind them and they have come to harm them uh, or they are talking to them but actually it is a kind of a delusion it is hallucination there may not be any such person who is there so these are disorders of the uh, the uh, brain so hallucinations delusions disordered thinking and behavior which impairs our daily functioning this can be really disabling viruses certain extensive exposure to marijuana or highly stressful situations these can trigger schizophrenia in the people who have inherited a tendency to develop the disorder then damage to the nervous system so there can be massive injury to the nervous system which can result in coma in convulsions in paralysis dementia and also in coordination so there could be slight damage which can impair the reasoning ability they can cause loss of memory disturb communication interfere with the motor function and also impair the health indirectly by reducing functions such as even attention and alertness so therefore the body's response to neurotoxins is influenced by factors such as neurotransmitter that is affected the cellular membrane integrity the presence of detoxifying mechanisms some examples of substances that can be neurotoxic to humans they can include certain plant seeds chemotherapy drugs radiations the drugs of abuse heavy metals certain food additives insecticides and pesticides cosmetics and also industrial cleaning solvents so cosmetics even in this there are certain chemical components which are added an example which i would like to give is lipsticks now in majority of the lipsticks and that too in those that are uh, very brightly colored for example red or maroon they uh, had once upon a time a very high concentration of lead so lead is a neurotoxicant and it can interfere with the uh, blood brain barrier and it can enter the blood brain barrier causing neurotoxic effects lead is also it can enter the placental barrier and it can also uh, interfere with the development of the growing fetus so it can cause even mental retardation to the fetus so therefore it also has teratogenic effect so the cosmetics the uh, european uh, agency they have examined several of the lipsticks and they contained 60 to 70% of lead content in them so after that now there are several other uh, uh, compounds uh, and the colorants that are being used and organic compounds also but there are also solutions to these we can also use natural um, uh, the uh, lip gloss or the gels which contain organic compounds such as the extracts of beetroot or you know the extract of plant products and even to dye the hair there are uh, the henna and other uh, natural hair coloring and hair washing substances which do not contain such harmful chemicals which can cause neurotoxicity the effects of neurotoxicity so some of the effects may appear immediately while others can even take months or years to manifest so it depends on various factors such as characteristics of the neurotoxin dose and exposure ability to metabolize and excrete the toxin so some symptoms of neurotoxicity this include paralysis or weakness in the limbs tingling and numbness in the limbs headache vision loss loss of memory and cognitive function behavioral problems depression loss of circulation and imbalance neurolatherism this is a paralytic disease which is caused by the extensive use of seeds of latherus sativus that is called kesari dal this is also referred to as a poor man's dal so it was used in madhya pradesh in several of the uh, districts there and people complained of paralysis and uh, spastic paraplegia so this is a uh, um, a neurotoxic that is this special kesari dal and a neurotoxin called as beta n oxylyl amino l alanine boaa so this was present in the seeds and it is found to be responsible for this effect and let me tell you these seeds look uh, very familiar to the arhar or the tuwar dal 
So that is why we have to be very careful in uh, selecting and in our food choice when we select the dals. The polychlorinated biphenyls. So this is an organic chemical. They are polychlorinated hydrocarbons. They are persistent organic pollutants. That means they remain in the environment for a long period of time. Then they are non-biodegradable and they can also be bioaccumulated in the plants for several years. This is used in the industrial and commercial applications, electrical, plasticizers, it is used in paints, in plastics, in pigments and also in the dyes. Now this polychlorinated biphenyls, they can cause cancer, adverse health effects on the immune, reproductive, nervous and the endocrine systems. Mercury. Now we have understood about the uh, Minimata disease which occurred in Japan. I made a mention of this. Now the India's Minimata is also there and uh, can you guess where India's Minimata exists? That would be in Singrauli which is a powerhouse of India and that has massive cold reserves and many thermal power plants. So mercury is one of the natural and perhaps the most harmful components of coal and large quantities of coal they are burnt in the thermal power plants and considerable amount of mercury is released into the atmosphere. The Center for Science and Environment they took a study around Singrauli and they see that the people complained of unexplained ailments and they report that mercury which is a deadly toxin in the coal is slowly entering people's homes, food, water and even their blood. Lead. This is a potent neurotoxin whose toxicity has been recognized for thousands of years. So the developing brain is particularly susceptible. Pregnant women young children are particularly vulnerable as the lead easily crosses the placenta and enters the fetal brain and interferes with normal development. The sources of lead contamination that is more than three-fourth of the global lead consumption is in the manufacture of lead acid batteries for motor vehicles but lead is also used in gasoline, in pigments, in paints, in soldiers, in the stained glass, in lead crystal glassware ammunition, jewellery, in toys and cosmetics and also traditional medicines. So that is why we should be uh, very careful. Now it is banned of course but previously uh, there was a report when children were actually you know when their uh, teething occurs they start biting the toys and some of the toys they had the lead content and those children reported to have a slow growth and they also had the mental uh, retardation and certain other problems because of chewing these lead toys uh, every day on, uh, on you know continuously uh, several hours and on a daily day to day basis. So but now of course lead is being uh, banned it is phased out in several countries and this is no longer used in toys and certain other um, manufacturing equipments. But again lead is also an anti-knocking additive and this was used uh, previously for several years as an anti-knocking additive in uh, the, uh, uh, the gasoline and this actually anti-knocking means that it will reduce the tendency of a fuel to auto ignite. So this is tetraethyl lead and but this damages the environment and also human health. So leaded petrol. This was in use for several years and leaded petrol poisoning has been one of the world's most serious environmental health problem and that was responsible for 90% of more of the human lead exposure. But now fortunately after several of the uh, movements and the policies and also the protocols that have come in place in Austria, in Canada, in Denmark, Germany, Japan, Slovakia, Sweden and also United States, lead is no longer a gasoline additive. Now there are also neurotoxins and dangerous vessels. So some vessels which contain lead, you know when people uh, make their food in that, that can give a very good taste, uh, the, especially the tamarind pulp and tamarind uh, substances which are made as soup, that can give a very good taste but then the toxin is slowly entering the human system. Endosulfan in the cashew nut. So this was an organic chlorine compound and this was uh, sprayed extensively in Kasargo district in Kerala and uh, on the cashew plantations. So here we find that this was an organochlorine compound which is persistent in the environment and even the breakdown products are persistent and they bioaccumulate in the humans. So there extensively this endosulfan was sprayed over the cashew plantations using a helicopter and finally the children who were born there in Kerala they had cerebral palsy 
congenital abnormalities you can see the state from this figure how toxic this chemical is and how this can cause mental aberrations and neurotoxicity in the uh, and the teratogenic effects that is a birth defects especially in the brain and the uh, mental disorders in the children that were born during that time drugs for example the anti neoplastic drugs and tricyclic antidepressants they have neurotoxic effects antidepressants they have a therapeutic activity at a low dose but then when they have uh, when they are taken at a higher dose then they can show a life threatening anti cholinergic effects at the higher doses in the same way the anti neoplastic drugs like cisplatinum it is a valuable chemotherapeutic agent but it can cause toxic neuropathies anti psychotic drugs and anti bacterial agents they can also produce disabling movements and disorders and they can also cause the trigger of loss of hearing and balance drugs of abuse so this is like methamphetamine and amphetamine the alterations of the dope aminogenic system they may persist even after years of uh, you are not getting exposed from the drugs but they may be associated with certain deficits in the motor and the cognitive performance and these normally people will tend to either uh, ingest eat or even you know uh, dope it on their uh, tongues and even they can also inject it into their systems so current research scientists are looking at whether occupational and environmental toxins may play a role in the neurodegenerative diseases such as alzheimers parkinson's disease and multiple sclerosis whether or not the interaction between environmental factors and genes contribute to brain disorders is another research question that is currently being investigated so therefore dear learners prevention is the key to dealing with neurological diseases of toxic environmental origin this can be prevented by eliminating or reducing the exposures at the source that is the primary prevention or they can also be controlled by early detection and diagnosis of the neurotoxic effects dear learners in this module we have understood about the concepts relating to neurotoxicology the neurotoxins and the several environmental factors and the heavy metals which are also responsible for creating neurotoxicity with uh, certain case studies for example we discussed that of endosulfan and that of lead and also mercury which is in singrauli where the thermal power plants are releasing the large amount of the mercury into the environment therefore we have seen how the uh, environmental factors and also certain uh, drugs of therapeutic and even the chemotherapeutic agents they can also lead to the neurotoxic effects i hope you have uh, understood the concepts relating to this uh, part of the lecture thank you for your patient listening